one of these in big and tall next time. Okay, how's everybody doing? Give it up for all your speakers, all your speakers tonight. You know, for... Thank you, thank you. Uh, for the next three hours, I want to share with you guys uh, just some things that the Lord has laid on my heart. Uh, hey, it's been a great night. Give it up for all the, all the recognition. Give everybody a hand. Everybody's been recognized. Uh, I promise I see my time. I will go under time. I'm never an overtime. I'm always an under time guy. Because I don't care how excited you are, there's only so long you can sit in a seat. You know, after, so I don't care who's speaking, I don't care what the prophetic word is, after a while, it's like, how long is it me gonna go? I mean, I know you can get rich here, but my God, how long? I ain't gonna never get out to spend my money. You know, I need it, so we're gonna do it. I'm gonna do it on the short side. Um, first, give the Lord a hand, please. I'm so thankful. If you love him like I love him, I thought about earlier, you can never thank him enough. So he's worthy. He's worthy of you standing for him. And so, um, you know, this is kind of tell your personal story tonight. And I got started in Pride America again, 1981. Some of you were not born. And again, I was a baby, but you were not born. And back in 1981, I came to a meeting. And like most broke people, I didn't. I had hidden from the meeting for a long time because someone kept inviting me and I would never go. And so finally, I come to me, well, back that up. I was, I was born in Philadelphia and um, me and uh, Jackie, we were over there talking about West Philly, you know, a little while. I couldn't believe it. I said, so Jackie, you in Philly? She said, yeah. I said, you go on appointments with, in Philly? You know, with, are, are, you, are you, you know, you caring? That's what I want to know, you know. She said, oh, I care. And I said, okay, I didn't want to make certain. Yeah. Cause I'm like, Philly, when I go back, I drive real fast. And people say, where you used to live? I said, right there, you know, right there. Right there. I don't slow down. I ain't trying to see who still remember me. No, I'm just like, boo, you know, just like that, right? And so I was born in Philly. My parents divorced when I was young. I grew up in Atlanta. And, uh, and I thank God for that. And uh, it, my whole life, so many things happened for different reasons. But I learned, the good thing about when I moved to Atlanta, it was the first time I found out I was broke. Because, you know, when you're a kid, you don't realize you're broke, right? All kids are happy. Poor kids, rich kids, kids just happy. Just happy kids, right? And then you start to get a little older, and you begin to find out it's, it's some things that some kids got that you ain't got. You ever know that? Like, like all their toys are new, all mine, like, refurbished. You know, that guy, they like, all my toys, ain't nothing ever in a box, you know, something like that. Like, tape all over the battery and stuff. They're like, what? And your mom just, you need to just be happy. You know how you try to tell your kids, see, when I was growing up, we ain't had nothing. They say, well, ain't it supposed to get better? You know, like, yeah, generation it ain't supposed to get the worst, you know, so I grew up, we didn't have nothing, and I learned early on that my mom said, well, you, you know, I ain't got no money for this. I ain't got no money for that. Her do you think money grows on trees? I said, I don't know if it do, but if it do, we ain't got none of them trees. I know that goes. They're like, we ain't never got no money. And so I learned to work, and I worked jobs, and I, you know, I worked all kinds of jobs. How many ever cut grass before? This, man, cut grass, I cut grass. And remember, cutting grass in a project is totally different kind of grass cut. You need, like, people say, man, you a kid, you had equipment. I said, man, I was in the projects. All you need was a swing blade. Anybody remember that? That little stick with a little bit. Oh, you just go there. $5. That's all you need, right? there. That was, $5 of grass. They didn't have no yards. You know, some of that said $5. And I saw, how many ever sold newspapers for? I had a newspaper. A lot of newspapers. So you got some entrepreneurs in. So I sold newspapers. I walked around. And I was, a lot of people see me, see I'm a big guy. And they say, you know, they see the rent. You an athlete. Were you in sports? I said, well, I was in sports. And I was a two sport athlete. Uh, played football and basketball. Well, really, football and baseball, so I was a basketball player, too. But anyway, some of you might remember I was number 43. Let me give you a little, let me help you out. <laughs> Ice cold coat! Ice cold coat! Ice cold coat! Cotton candy! Popcorn! You know what I mean? Popcorn! Right here! So, yeah, way before Deion Sanders and Bo Jackson, it was me. I played for the Braves and the Falcons. You know, I was a you know concession guy. 
So hey, you know, you start somewhere. I did, you know, threw out my ankle, you know, going up the stands one day, and I was just never the same. You know, I was never the same. So I had to give up my athletic dream. And so uh, after I didn't make it in pro sports, you know, I moved on and I became, uh, I was a courier, and couriers in the house, I know HB was courier, do courier work. I used to be a driver ed instructor, anybody ever done that? And, and as you ever watch me drive, that's what's so scary. My wife is always like, you how can you teach, who taught you? You know, that guy, right? Please give my better half a hand, my wife, Mrs. Lane Shepard. I'm so blessed. Stand up, baby, stand up. I like to always show off my recruiting abilities, all right. Glad to have my wife here, my oldest son, and my daughter right here. Stand up, Sam the third. Annika, stand up, Sam the third. Annika, it's good to have. Uh, and I, uh, all of our regional vice president, please stand. The Shepherd Super Team RVP. Give it up for RVPs. They moved a bunch of people down here. Our team leaders, our next wave, where are our team leaders at? Stand up our team leaders, all right. That's our next wave of vice presidents. And then everybody super team just stand up right quick. And we brought a whole lot of people from Atlanta. All right, we came a long way, all right. So uh, we're excited, we thank God for, you know, everything you accomplish in Pride America, it, in my opinion, it's a, it's a favor of God. You go to work and you get blessed with some people. Okay, take away the people. Oh, I know you good. I know you time. Take away the people. You ain't got nothing. Everybody understand that? I don't care. Oh, I know you good. You smooth. Overcome the objections. <laughs> take away the people. You broke. Does everybody understand that? So I thank God that I, one thing you better understand that this is a business where you just need to be so thankful to be a part of it. And then just work so hard to just what you gotta do, Sam? Your people, are, uh, you just go to work. Ain't no, ma it was magic. I'd have sprinkled that dust on myself a long time ago, right? <laughs> now, what I spring it on me, I spring it on everybody. It was just magic. Let's just throw the magic around, you know, something like that. It was magic. The company been around 34 years. Don't you think they would put out a book called The Magic? You know, something like that. All you gotta do is read the book, and it's all of a sudden it's just magical. Everybody, you know, it's like a Harry Potter story, just magic, just all that. Don't work like that. You got to go to work. And if you work hard enough, you'll just end up getting what a lot of people call lucky. Now, it's really not luck. It's just what happens when you keep sowing seeds, keep sowing seeds, all of a sudden, some of the soil going to be good soil. But it may not grow. You look at over here, it may pop up over there or way down there or back here. Another thing, I don't know when it's going to grow, but I do know you can't plant and then grow, reap the next day. Does that make sense? You don't reap. All right, come on, Lord. I went to the meeting last night. Give me somebody. <laughs> Come on. I sat through the whole meeting. All them speakers. Give me somebody. <laughs> I drove eight hours. Help me, Jesus. You know something like that? <laughs> I don't know when it's going to happen. Because I can trace people back a long way. You just never know when something's going to happen. A lot of people ask, I was over there, Jackie, Jackie was like, is Angie Reed here? You know, she said, that girl, Angie Breathe. Angie been in business here like 20 years for anybody halfway knew my name. It's like 20 years. They're like, and they still don't spell it right, you know. But 20 years, Angie been around the year. People like, Angie Reed. And Angie, she's all that. She bad. I never in two years, in one year, her first year, she just finished her first year part-time. She made sixty-four thousand dollars. Stand up, where's Angie? Where where Angie is standing right there? Angie Reed, right there. Six four thousand dollars. Pete. People don't even think she real. People say, you just, who is really behind that Angie Reed? You just put that name on a computer. Who doing all them numbers? Now, Angie Reed, let me, let me tell you something, how something happened. In 1983 or 4, I recruited this guy named Ron. Ron became an RVP. He was my second RVP. And before Ron quit, his sister who worked with me for a month, did one appointment. The one appointment, we hired another gentleman who became one of my top guys. He became a senior vice president. He was doing good for a while, he gone now. But for a while, he was an MVP for us about two, three years in a row. Now see, 
Another important principle, the most important test in Prime America is the test of T-I-M-E. Oh yeah, it's a whole lot of people have a season, but you got to be here for a while. Does that make sense? And so, but, but my buddy, he was there for a while, great guy, we still good friends, but he quit. But before he quit, now remember, this started back in 83. It was like 83 when I first got around. So 83, 84, 85, right? I, get, I think I got uh, Frank, 85, 86. Then along the way, he becomes a senior vice president and he recruits a guy named Rick. And then Rick was in the business for a long time before Rick quit. At the end of the 90s, he had an RVP named Alanda. Now Alanda quit. And about four or five years later, I re-recruited him. And he came in in 03. And really, truth be told, from 03, to about 2010, he really didn't do anything. He was fighting, struggling. You know what you're going to just going through, but he didn't quit. Just kept hanging in there. Nothing really was happening. Now, 03, 04, 05, 06, 07, 08, 09, 010. <laughs> that eight years, right? So, oh, 010, 2010. There's too many smart people in the room. You got it right. It's not 010, it's 2010. He doesn't know anything, my God. All that money, take a class, guy. You know, something like that. So anyway, you thought it. But anyway, okay, so, so eight and a half years after he recruited a young lady named Angie Reed. Something that started back in 83. I wasn't even making 100 grand back in 83. So from 83, when I was making 40 grand, so you don't know where to see, you know where to see. So, for, so now 2017 and 11, 28 years later, through a seed planted in 83, through a guy I met through a play cousin <laughs> who ain't never ever done nothing including by himself, ain't bought, joined nothing. But the play cousin then introduced me to his boy, who went through all that. And today we have one of the top, you look on the contest, she was the number one pioneer, future leader in the whole company, number one in the contest in the category. And not only is she doing great things herself, but she's raised the bar in the entire Camp Creek Training Center where we are. So give Angie another hand, please. <laughs> yeah, you know what she's done. Now, when, when I call her name out, you ought to clap for that. 65,000, you ought to stand up. 65,000 the first year in the business. That's, that's a lot. That, that's life only, okay? That ain't, that's life only on RL, now SRL contract. And all of that, some of that was as a district, you know, division. So now that's got to let you know. Now maybe you saying, well, saying, I've been here 40 years. I'm trying to go district this month. <laughs> what does that mean for me? Number one, possible career change for you, okay? Go, go, go. Let's keep it real, possible career change, right? Number two, that just means you need to keep hope alive and it needs to let you know that if somebody is coming in today and doing that, then certainly I'm in the right place at the right time. The business is better than it's ever been, but yet at the same time, I see somebody winning fast, but I see it took 28 years for a seed to germinate. So it takes some time for things to happen. See, we want it right away. Most people join Prime America by the time they gave out them, you know, shirts, the Mark Williams shirts. By the time, you know how many shirts I got in my office? <laughs> Folks recruiting somebody, go on the shirt. I'm right now, if you don't have a shirt, you come by my office, I'm selling them five dollars right now. I got it. I know Jason got some in the back. You do business with Jason, he'll help you out. But if after you can help out and, and support Jason, he do some good stuff in PFS Media. But then come by my office, five dollars, okay, five dollars. Because the people, you understand how quickly people give up on themselves? They recruit one person, the next person say no. They say I don't think this for me. <laughs> how you don't think you ain't even done it? Well, I, I just well I've been here two years. I ain't made no money. You went to school from K through 12, you didn't make no money. You know, something like that. <laughs> then you went to college, maybe four or five years. Most people from zero to 22, 25 ain't made a dime, right? And you yet going to school every day. You ain't in the fifth grade talking about, where my money at? I, I've been going to school for six years, where that? 
they going to school. <clears throat> Folks, I looked at numbers from zero. You know that from zero to age 25, it's like 18,000 days. That's how many days you spend before you kind of start to find a career. 18,000 days. That's a whole lot of days. Does that make sense? I think 18,000. I might have my numbers wrong. Let me look back at my numbers. I don't want to get it right. Let's look at that because I jotted it down. I take that back. That's 9,000 days. That's still a lot of days. Right. 9,000 days. Right. Now here's the next thing. Then from 25 to 75, that's where, then it's 18,000 days. I want to make sure I got it right because Jaron back there, we'll uh, delete that Jaron on the tape, all right? Start me at 9,000 days, right? 9,000 days, all right? So 9,000 days to get to look for work and then from 25 to 75, you got 18,000 days. And if you commute, as Brett told us, you commute about an hour each way, and you work 40 hours a week, that's another 6,000. You spend 6,000 of those 18,000 days you got just going back and forth to work. Think about that. One third of your life just going back and forth to work. Broke, ain't got a dime. One third. <laughs> People talking about, what's wrong with Social Security? Social Security ain't insecure. Social Security was never meant to be anything but a supplement. It was never meant to be. Just because you didn't save any money, you got a 65 broke, don't be looking at the government talking about, where my money at? You know, something like that. <laughs> Come on, Obama, where my money at? You know? Hey, I hope they get rid of Social Security. You know why? Because you can't be counting on somebody else to take care of you. Right? You need to get on your knees, pray to God to bless you, and then bless your heaven and go to work. Does that make sense? When you get up off your knees, faith without works is what? Yeah. Yeah. See, a lot of us got a lot of faith. Oh, we just in prayer. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord, you tearing day and night. Oh, Jesus. And he looking down like, uh, you going to go to work sometime? I feel you. I appreciate the praise. Now, put a little performance with the praise. The sooner or later, you got to get up and go to work. Does that make sense? Don't just say, they not, the day of him raining manna down, them days over, right? Don't just be sitting there, come on, where the manna at? What's this work stuff? I don't even understand that work stuff. You got to go to work. Does that make sense? And you go to work and you work hard enough and diligently enough, guess what? All of a sudden your efforts, they're going to start to get blessed. But it takes time. And I don't know how long you got. I don't want to spend five, 6,000 my 18,000 days going back and forth to work. Does that make sense? And so you need to take advantage of this primary business opportunity. And folks, after all the little jobs I had, my, one of my last jobs, how many people been security guard? Any security guards in here? A lot of security guards. Stand up, you're a security guard right now. You ever been security? Stand up. Stand up. All security. Look at all these security guards. All right, now. Let me see if I can keep, keep standing. Now, keep standing if you're a security guard in a cemetery. Keep standing. So, every time. That's where I win right there, boy. That's the separation right there. See, and just in case you thought life was bad for you, it don't get no worse in life. You know your life got to be pretty low for you to even take a job as a security guard in a cemetery. My self-esteem was way down, you understand? You ain't thinking about much of nothing, you know, something like that. Now, the reality, folks, I just believe in hard work. Does that make sense? I ain't got no job pride. I ain't got no, it's people don't join Primerica because they have job pride. They think that, oh, that's one of those things. I can't let my friends know I went to school. I got all this education to one of those things. You know, so I'd rather be broke at Xerox. But I can use, you know, I have my own name badge and employee parking, you know, all that kind of stuff. Rather than be one of those things, you know, that prime America thing, you know. I don't know about those things. Because, see, if you don't know about those things, what you're really saying is I don't trust myself enough to work hard every day. I'll take my chances in corporate America, even though the headlines say it's real bad, it's real tough, they downsizing, they right sizing, they laying off. I'm gonna take my chance over there. See folks, I learned early on, I used to study history and I never liked slavery. How many of you, how many of you agree that slavery is bad? Raise your hand, slavery is bad, all right? It's part of our history, but it's bad. How many will fight against slavery today? All right. Let me see how many of you, how many of you got a job right now? Just want to see who's supporting slavery. Okay, all right, we got, got our slavery supporters. Oh, man, boy. I, I, I got you on that one, boy. 
Y'all fell right into that one. I'm down. Yeah, I hate slavery. Obama. Yeah, I hate slavery. But you got a job. See, the slavery system was never about color. It was always about green. It was never about, the first slaves were white. They were called indentured servants. Read your history. I used to minor in history. I didn't finish college, but I went for a while, right? So anyway, <laughs> while I was there, I got mad. I found you get no credit for homecoming. I was just out, you know? So anyway, so, uh, and in history, so the first indentured servants, you heard them. The problem with indentured servants, they were like people with a temp license in Georgia. It didn't last too long. Does that make sense? <laughs> See, that temp license ain't about nothing. It's just good. You just here for a season. And the dentist servant, they were just here for a season. And so then they said, man, we need some more permanent help. Let's get the Indians. They got the Indians. Start making slaves out of the Indians. But then the Indians had a bad attitude. <laughs> they said, man, these Indians, man, they want to scout people. <laughs> and man, they, they had these little things called a bow and an arrow tomahawk. They said, the Indians, just, we ain't going to deal with the Indians. They'll get with somebody else. And they started bringing over some brothers. So the brothers were real good. They were easy to spot in the crowd. <laughs> it was just kind of hard to be a <clears throat> Have you seen Joe Stevens? Woo! <laughs> so kind of like, hey, couldn't run away because we didn't know where we was. So that makes sense. Where, where we going? I don't know. You know so. And so, but after a while, the slave system, it began to run out. Because in the old days, they said, you know, so the slave owners got together. They said, man, we got to do something. Because the slaves, they revolting, they running, you know. And so we got to do something. They said, let's make some changes. Because we got to modernize. So they said, let's go away. We got to get rid of, like that thing, plantation. That's just a negative word. You know, right? You know, you go say, yeah, I just come up to you and say, hey, you want to work on my plantation? What are you like, plantation? <laughs> man, I ain't down like that. How about my corporation? Okay, okay, I'm with it. Okay. <laughs> You know, change it up. I say, look, if you need some work, why don't you go to the slave auction? You know where they parade the slaves? The slave auction? I mean, the job fair. Yeah, the job fair. Yeah. I, I, I come on to the job fair, get dressed up for a dude, don't we? Put out our finest. <laughs> you know, in the old days of plantation, on, they'd be watching the slaves. That's what they do at the job fair. Now, ooh, he look good. Ooh. Let me see your paper, cause you had that paper. That you get, you call it a resume, resume, whatever, right? And you go show me your resume. You can you imagine you trying to fight your way into slavery? Isn't that right? Yeah. Now look, look at my credentials. Yes, sir. Yes, I, I worked for Master McDonald when I was a kid. Worked my way up to Master Walmart, and I can be good for you too, sir. You know something like that. And so now, so the mother thing they said we got to change some of the lingo. Because, like, slave was a negative word. So I come to you, I say, slave? I said, come on, I want you to be my slave. Melvin would say, slave? I said, Melvin, my employee. Oh, okay. I'll be your employee. Do we have an employee parking? Yeah, we got employee slave parking. You know, right over there. And then so Melvin started asking me, what about advancement? You know, is there an opportunity? Now, in the slave day, you know, say, you do a good job. We bring you in the house. But you go to somebody out there, they say, I, I ain't going to be nobody's house boy. I say, supervisor, male, supervisor. Oh, yeah, we, we ready for that, boy. Supervisor, count me in. Yeah, can't wait. To, Mama, I just got promoted. Yeah, I was a house boy. They call supervisor now. Yes, sir. Now, the job of the house boy was let the master know what's going on. So see, I'd have to pull my report right now, like, Master, what? That Mr. Laughing, what? He talking about freedom, what? <laughs> we'll deal with John later, you know. Y'all ain't gonna see John no more, the plantation. We had to stop that kind of talk, right? Now, in the old days, it was unnatural to be enslaved. So they used to put chains on them to keep them there. They even had, you know, in-home housing, you know, for they provided on campus, you know, back in the old days on campus housing. But the day they found out, man, that chain thing, you know, I started chaining the slaves up. They said, man, what can we use? Oh, we have a benefit program. Oh, that's a new thing. Oh, yeah. You'll be asking for what kind of chain, I mean, benefits do you offer? 
And so today we'll chain you with a 401k. We'll chain you with a little health care. We'll chain you with a little two weeks vacation. Oh, that, that, I like that. We'd be happy about it. You be bragging. We got all kind of good chains on my job. <laughs> and so in the bottom line was, was there compensation? Every slave received food. Didn't they? Wasn't what you wanted, but you got something to eat. Did they give you some clothes? And the housing, right? The on-campus housing. Now today, by the time you get your paycheck, about all you can do is buy a little food, <laughs> get a little clothes, live somewhere you don't want to live. Is that about where it goes? It's like, ain't nothing changed. Ain't, ain't nothing changed except you get to go home. Because, see, once you've been trained into slavery, they, had, they could let you go home. See, in the old days, it was unnatural, so slave would run. But today, they let you go home. And on your own, you drive back, don't you? <laughs> they were talking about, they said, the, I, I was listening to me, they said, you think we let them go on Friday, they'll be back Monday? Yeah, they're going to be back. They ain't got no money to stay. So on your own, like this weekend, where are you on Monday morning? Oh, and then, but the funny thing is, you spend all day talking about how bad it is. Man, I hate this job. I can't stand it over here. Blah, 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 blah. How long you been there? 23 years. <laughs> how many years do they have to abuse you before you get to a point of breakage? You know, what does it take for them to finally sink in that you need a change? Well, as long as you'll accept it, you'll get it. Does that make sense? Don't get mad at the job. Because they never promised you nothing. They never once said, hey, we're going to make you wealthy. Hey, they said, hey, let me tell you how to keep your job. You do this, you do that, maybe we won't fire you. <laughs> you knew the day you took the job, it wasn't enough money. You remember that? Like, what's the pay? This the pay. You're like, is that it? Say, yeah. Okay. <laughs> See you in the morning. <laughs> now, if you got a job, don't quit your job tomorrow. Don't, don't go to work. Don't go to work. Yeah, now, that little boy, Sam, talking about slavery. I ain't no slave. I ain't no punk. I'm out. <laughs> don't be calling me to feed you. Uh -uh. Be down there looking for sandwiches and all that stuff. Talking about. It's, I was so in fired up Friday night. Hey, you better get motivated in self. Oh yeah, speakers, we can encourage you, we can motivate you for a minute, but that don't last too long. Some of you that excited tonight, you won't even be here tomorrow morning. By tomorrow morning, something happened, like, talk. I just ain't going back. You know, something happened. Some of you be offended, all that slave talk, I like my job, I don't know why he talking all that slave talk. I love my job, and I'm going to stay on my job. You know, something like that, hey, do your thing. When they freed the slaves, a bunch of them did not go. You know, I read a book about them called Bullwhip Days. They were interviewing slaves. They're like, freedom. Shit. Who gonna feed us? I ain't going nowhere. Really? Master Charlie been good to me. Yeah, I've been whipped a while, but I was out of line. You know something like that? Yeah. See, after a while, we begin to just accept that's the way it's supposed to be. You got to see yourself worthy of the blessing. I would rather just go forward and see what can happen in my life. Worst case scenario, plantation, always hiring. Does that make sense? It's always hiring. So just go for, why not go? I'm not, I'm telling you, but then don't listen to me. You understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you because this was in my heart, but, and some of you, this resonate with you, and you might need to hear this, but if this don't resonate with you, then you go with yourself to thy own self, be true. And if you love your job, man, stay on your job. Some people always need a job because you won't work for yourself. You won't work unless somebody else tell you what to do because you don't have that little thing called initiative. You're going to be late in the morning. Why? Because oh, ain't nobody wake me up. Uh. No, you got to be have initiative. And then when you get back Saturday, you got to get after it. What, what happens when you leave? Oh, I know we excited now, man. You in a good environment. Everybody here, we love Brown Mary. We excited, man. You, Charlemagne, you got Brett, you got John, Dick Walker, all these RVB. Man, it's exciting. But when you're making that phone call, ain't nobody cheering in. 
You just sitting around on the phone. You really be praying for a disconnect. You ever call me praying? I just be called. I pray. I hear do 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 sweets. I said, I made my calls. You know, something like that. You ever go to the house praying they not there? I used to, I used to go through that. Man, this thing, every part of this business was hard for me. I didn't like that stuff. I didn't like getting rejected by my friends, rejected by my family. None of that felt good to me. And I kept having to say, but I want to win. And I want to change my family's life. And I want things to be different. And I saw so many people in my family had done it the other. They did the traditional route. They found it. They went to college. They did all that stuff. But they weren't free and they weren't happy. I said, so it must be a different way. There's got to be a better way. And just like Brett talked about, so many people I know that were successful had not graduated from college. So guess what? I'm not saying don't go to school. I'm glad my son went to the University of North Carolina, graduated, no debt. Give him a hand, no debt. And graduated, I'm happy with that. I got a son, graduated from Georgia, no debt. Because I was blessed to be a blessing. I will bless you, a blessing. I got a son right now, his school, his private school costs more than their college. Pray for me, y'all. Pray for us. I'm like, yeah. It just unusually 25,000 in the eighth grade. I, be, I really want to go to the classes myself. You know, something like that. I'm like, I'm like what they learning in there? You know, something like that. What? And then I got to buy uniforms. What? I'm like, the uniform? I'm expecting uniform lunch and a, you know, a Mini Cooper to come with that. You know, for 25,000. What? We got to still drive in the school. Y'all come pick them up. You know, that's what I'm thinking. But guess what? It's a blessing in the education system. That it's a blessing to send your kid to a private school if that's what you want to do. It's just a blessing. Is it a blessing to have a choice? Yes. See, that's why I think just to have a choice in whatever it is. If you want to go out of town, go. If you don't want to go, don't go. Now, don't do stuff prematurely. Wait on your season. Right? Don't have one good mom. You out of town. Some people, they over-celebrate. Oh, I closed one life out. I'm going to Cancun. It made broke people travel way more than people with money. Every time I talk to my broke friend, they always in and out of town. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. All this stuff. Hanging out with other broke people. You know, the, the, at the family reunion. You know, one of them. You know, that's big in the black community, family reunion, boy. Because broke people like to stay together. Come on, everybody. Come on. Everybody, come on. Just ooh. Kumbaya, my name. Kumbaya. Everybody broke. Don't hang out there and I ain't. I'm just giving you my opinion, okay? This does not represent the opinions of the Tampa Bay RVP leadership team, all right? Or the opinions of Prime America. You know, I put a little, hey, you got to make some different decisions. And so when I got started in this business, well, I used to take a vacation every single year because that's what I used to do. And after my first year in Prime America, I did that. And I talked to a big leader after that. He said, man, do you always used to do that? I said, yeah. He said, well, you want your life to change? He said, yeah, then your schedule better change. I said, yes, sir. I never did. I said, I'll never do it again. He said, the company do trips. You want a vacation? Win the trip. All right? You don't win the trip, you probably don't deserve vacation right now. Uh, and after that, I saw that before that, I didn't win the company trips. Because it was, I had my own little trip going. I found company trips are better than your trip. The company pay for the trip. Company give you gifts, food, all kind of stuff on a company trip, you know. So I like the company trip, but then the best trip is the one you can take yourself at the right time. Because still, the company trip, you know, breakfast at seven ain't really vacation. You know how it is. Breakfast, you know, I'm, I go on down and get it because it's free, you know. But I ain't happy about it, you know. Because a real vacation, you know, breakfast is like ten thirty, you know, something like that. Twelve, you know, if you even eat, you know, you're like it's just doing what you want to do having the option to do what you want to do. And everybody in this room is some things that you want to do that the only reason you're not doing it right now is either cash or it's time. Either I don't have the time or I don't have the cash. And that's fine and that's where you are right now, but you ain't got to stay that way. Sooner or later, you can get to a point in time where you start to make some choices. And for what a fun place to spend your life. Primarily Financial Services. The, the greatest company in the world with the greatest people. Here, here we are tonight talking about freedom. Here we are tonight, we just recognize a bunch of RVPs make 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, all those kind of things. Folks, where else is there a room of people, average ordinary folks like us, that are sitting around saying, you can make 10,000, you can make 20,000, you can make 30,000. Dick Walker made millions of dollars in his lifetime with Prime America. Where else can that happen? And then still in the game. 
Still, he ain't got to be here tonight. He could be somewhere counting his money. That's a full time. That's a full time job for Dick. Just counting money, counting. Money. You know how long it take to get them? Okay, one million. Here you go. He's just counting. But he's here because he's still excited about promoting our VPs. And give Dick Walker a hand for being here. Uh, Dick and Beth Walker a hand for being here. So hey, as I wrap up, as I wrap up here, folks. Let me close on one of my favorite quotes, going back to slavery. Harriet Tubman, that great emancipator, said way back in the 1800s, she said, I freed thousands of slaves. I could have freed more if only they had known they were slaves. Amen. See, folks, most of the people we talk to don't even realize the state that they're in. And so it's up to us. We got to be patient with them. We got to talk to them because they don't understand. If they knew what you know, they knew what I know, they would join. They would get excited. They would get busy. But they don't know. Even most of the people in proud America don't realize what you got your hands on. Because if you truly realize it, you work harder. You fight more. You, you, you get up early. You stay up late. You be happy and more positive. You ain't got it yet, but it's okay. Because God has blessed you. You're still here. And you can go get it right when you leave here. So we're going to party. It's been incredible being with you guys. We're so honored. I'm so thankful for getting our teammates to make that drive that they made. And all of you that came up from South. People here from all. Everybody say, if you're local, you still sacrifice to be here because there's somewhere else you could have been. So I'm th just thankful to be in this environment. Let's go do something great. We'll see you in the morning. Thank you. God bless.